So back at the Reagan Ranch, week uh, going on week two of this quarantine thing, and uh, me and Dustin have been uh, building a garden for the apocalypse. So hopefully we never actually have to see the fruits and vegetables that we're going to be planting. But uh, you know, if we are here, at least we have it, and uh, if not, then uh, they got a really nice uh, garden. So four tiers. We put up a little fence. We just have the door put in, but I'll give you a look. See. What you doing? Just getting ready for an interview with uh, Diabetic Living Magazine. Oh yeah? Yeah, I'm a featured diabetes champion. They pick like four or five people every year to profile and highlight. So I'm one of them. You're a champion? For diabetics everywhere. Do they get you a medal or something? I think so. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's like, you're a champion for diabetics, not so much like champion. But oh, like, you didn't have to run. It. You didn't have to run around a track. No, or there was no, there was no athletic prowess to be displayed and rewarded. Well, you did go up and down quite a few mountains. Quite a few mountains. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so we'll see. We're uh, we're out at the ranch. We're doing this, and we're gonna plant some plants, right? That's the plan. That's the plan. We'll see what happens. Yeah. All right. See how that garden works. Yeah. All right, Dad. Cool. Well, have a good talk. All right, thanks. Use words good. Okay. All right. Bye. Hi, how are you? Oh, you know. <laughs> how are you guys out there? It's New York's a hot spot. Are you all safe and healthy and everything? Good. We're in California, yeah. So we are. Um, we my book tour. We ended up canceling, and we cleared off all of our events for March and April, and looking to we're just fingers crossed that we get to do this fundraiser at the end of uh may but we're out in the mountains so we're far from other people and we have we have some trails on the property so i'm able to walk a little bit but i tell you what what i need is like a 20 plus miler that just totally smokes my legs so i can just get through like all these emotions <laughs> like i am just i feel like a cooped up cat in here it's crazy <laughs> Oh, yes, he is. I'm just so thankful. Like, Newsom is really, really handling this well. So I feel like we're in good hands, um, all things considered. It's nice to have a voice of reason amongst all the ones that aren't. <laughs> yeah. 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 And, 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 and even if you don't like what the straight talk is, like, none of this is like, none of this is personally attacking anyone. Like, shelter in place is not because we think that you're stupid. It's like, just do it so we can all go back to life, please and thanks. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. What are we doing, Sydney? Planting peas. Yeah. Do you know that pea seeds are peas? Yeah. Uh, I do now. <laughs> I didn't know that. I mean, it makes sense when you think about it. What you doing in there? I'm playing carrots. Yeah? <laughs> yeah. I see those seeds there. Oh, they're huge. That's going to turn into carrots someday. Huh. Yeah. That's something, isn't it? It's freaking wild, man. So what do we plant today? Carrots? carrots beets? beets, and cucumbers in this box. Yeah, lettuce, tomatoes, two different types of tomatoes. Yeah, we got some kale. Uh huh. We got some, uh, a bunch of herbs. All the things. Yeah. Herbs. Um, and yeah, uh, what else we got? We, we haven't planted watermelon yet, but we got two different kinds of watermelon. We got a bunch of hot peppers. We got a bunch of hot peppers. We got uh, garlic, a bunch of stuff. A bunch of potatoes, fingerling, yep. russet, golden. golden. Yep.
I love that. And let's talk about the nonprofits too. I saw that you guys are choosing a handful of nonprofits to support. You mentioned that you donate 10% of your proceeds. What, uh, what kind of nonprofits are you supporting? And do you want to shout them out and give our listeners a little heads up as to who you're partnering with and why they should be excited about that? That is incredible. And like, as a person who runs a nonprofit sidebar, uh, that is some functionality that is just incredible to be able to connect people with the volunteers that they need and the enthusiasm, and especially having people host when you're driving through like that is such a breath of fresh air and such a big sigh of relief. Cause that's one of the hardest parts about coordinating a nationwide tour is where do you sleep? Like you can go just first camping in national forest. What do you do when you're in a metropolitan area? And that's, that's such a great resource for those communities. So thank you for the work that you do. Um, is there anything else that we haven't covered that you'd like for listeners to know? And if so, what is that? And if not, uh, where can we find you and what's the timeline looking for the launch of the app? Okay. You too. Thanks so much. Bye. <sighs> what the hell was that all about? Uh, doing a fake podcast interview for a podcast or for a outdoor company that wants to have a podcast. So you were asking the questions instead of answering the questions. Yes. So it turns out you can use words good in res- in, in uh, response asking, to a question yeah, yeah, not only in response, but actually asking questions. Cool, good. Well, that's something. That is something. You're ambidextrous with words. <laughs> I just had a little like cough and barf at the same time. Oh God, I'm really glad. Did you get that? Oh yeah. Got, oh God, like that was. I just like almost relived breakfast. Yeah. Well, you you so. <laughs> You're you're conducting this interview while eating breakfast and doodling and just casually, you know, hosting a great event, uh, podcast. Well, that was something. Yeah, thanks. Go live. Let's try it again. Three, two, <clears throat> one. You're live. That's what it says. I don't know if that's true. <laughs> Jesus H. All right. Well, I'm just going to wait while this does the spinning wheel of death. Um, I can check on my phone. Oh, yay. There we go. I can. Oh, okay. Yay. There we go. Okay. It's doing it. All right. Fun. Good morning, everybody. How are you? Welcome to Read and Reflect Live. My name is Sydney. I wrote this book. It's called Hiking My Feelings, Stepping Into the Healing Power of Nature. And today I'm going to read you chapter 12. It's called Bill Hicks Was Right About Everything. If you're new here, um, chapter 11, I uh, did the Five Peak Challenge in one day at Mission Trails Regional Park, which is a park here in San Diego. And as I was hiking, I realized that the Clifton Strengths Assessment test that I took was aligning to the mountains I was climbing as I was climbing them. So I was learning about how this all works, what we're doing, um, and all that fun stuff. Thank you, Jess. Thank you for the confirmation that I'm live. I appreciate you. Um, Okay, so... Uh, I had just done the five peak challenge and hiking my feelings was born on the top of Stonewall Peak. It started as a hashtag. Um, it felt like a calling. We're about to see where it's going to take me. So chapter 12, if you're with us, uh, reading live, it's on page 153 is where we start in the hard copy. This is the book I'm going to read. Then we'll listen to some music. Then we'll go through the resources. Here we go. Ooh, yeah. (laughs) Oh, it's fun. Happy Sunday, everybody. So let's dive in. Uh, First of all, who's Bill Hicks? That's a great question. He is a comedian who never really got uh, enough credit, I don't think, while he was here. He uh, died in the 90s. But his uh, his style of comedy was interesting and timely in that most of the comedy that was being done in America prior to Bill Hicks was largely like impressions and like weird body performances and faces and voices and stuff. Um, and this dude rolls up and he's like, I'm just going to talk about the things that nobody wants to talk about and dissect American culture and tell you what's really happening here behind all the systems that keep us playing dumb and small. And so if I had been like 
I don't know, older than third grade <laughs> when he was like at his prime um, because he died in like 94, I think. So I was in fourth grade when he died. I didn't know who he was until I started dating Barry. Um, but we started watching this, uh, one of his specials, an old tape of it. And he does this bit about how marketers and advertisers should go kill themselves. And he says it like nine times in the span of two and a half minutes. I linked to it in the... Um, and the resources for this chapter so watch that when you get a second but essentially he's like you are like date uh satan's spawn and you're making the world a terrible place and if you work in marketing or advertising you should go kill yourself and at the time i was still working in marketing and advertising and i was like oh my god like the stuff he's saying he's not wrong and i just remember feeling like a little bit offended and a little bit like not all marketers right like how everybody who gets offended about anything says that they're not one of those people um i was like but i'm not like that and so i was kind of like feeling defensive about this profession that i had dedicated at that point my entire adult life to um but also the seed he planted wasn't for me to go kill myself the seed he planted was like you know what he's right and it was that layer of thinking about how we're just making people want things they don't need and all this stuff that i was able to kind of look at my resume when i got diagnosed with diabetes and be like bill hicks was right like all the things that i think are really cool that in an interview for a job i would brag about because i think that these are like the stepping stones to career greatness are actually teaching people how to be sick and numb and I'm a byproduct of the work I'm doing. That was the seed that, I, that was planted when I saw that Bill Hicks thing several, several years prior. So it was just a really interesting um, shift for me. And that's where I had first heard of um, fear versus love being outlined in the way that I use it in my life now. I picked that up from Bill Hicks. So on the closing of his last special, which is called Revelations, um, he talks about how uh he frames it in an acid trip and he's like hey this just in young man on acid realizes that nothing is real everything is terrible and it's just a ride or something like that and he goes on and he talks about how life is just a ride and how like you if you don't like it you can get off and we kill the people that come back from other parts of the universe and they're like hey none of this matters like gandhi all these like all these different leaders who at some point in time over the course of life have really like stuck out and been like hey it matters people that are working towards collective consciousness people that are working to raise the vibration of humanity people that do light working people that have different psychic abilities different clairvoyances stuff like that like these kinds of people get ridiculed because they're so far outside the system that they can see the system for what it is and so in this thing towards the end of this bit he says you know it's always a choice and you can choose love or fear and when I understood the difference between making decisions from a place filled of fear versus a place filled with filled with love, um, that also changed how I saw my life. And that's one of the biggest tenets at the back of this book is like, one, everything's always a choice. And yes, the foundation that I was born on to make choices from and the foundation you were born on from which to make choices might be completely different. The choices that we make day to day might be completely different, but we always do have a choice. And what we aren't changing, we're choosing. And when we're choosing to operate from a place of fear, we're really limiting our experience as humans to see what life is like when we look at things from a place of love. So what's going on, Mrs. Williams? I'm sitting in the van. Yeah. <laughs> Been doing a lot of van sitting lately. Yeah. And sometimes it's fire sitting, but yeah. it just seems to be a lot of sitting and not a lot of hiking. Yeah. yeah. Why is that? Uh, because anything locally uh, in Cuyamaca State Park or down at Three Sisters, from what I gather, uh, well, all the trails are closed in San Diego County. Mm -hmm. And, uh, the, the word on the digital streets is that if you go out to Three Sisters or somewhere else, um, you could get slapped with a fine. I've heard anywhere from like a thousand, fifteen hundred up to like five grand. So I don't know how much it actually is, but all of those sound like way too expensive to risk it. <laughs> yep, nature's closed. Yeah, nature's super closed right now. Yeah. So before it was just like the trails are wet, please stay off. And then it was like, hey, uh, social distancing is not happening, please stay away. And then they added a ranger. Was it last weekend? Yeah. Yeah, because there were like a hundred cars that came down the hill. Um, past the ranch to go to Three Sisters last weekend on Saturday, and then Sunday they were like, nope, and the Gestapo was there, like, writing fines and shit, so, yeah. I don't know, but um, not a lot of hiking has been happening, but I think this week we're going to go walk the road. 
Mm -hmm. Like get some, get some steps in. We'll go scope it out. <laughs> yeah. 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 See how it goes. Because so. finally it's a uh, good weather. Yeah. And that's the other thing too, is like for the, on the days where it was nice and we could hike are the days when they started like imp adding reasons not to and right. deterrence. Um, but other than that, since we got back, like the number of nice days I can count on one hand because it's been pretty wet or cloudy or snowy here since we got back from Joshua Tree. So. Yeah. And it's supposed to be like 70s this week. Yeah, so yeah. I just want to like go put some shorts on, put on my boots, and just like go for a walk. <laughs> <laughs> Preferably one that's hard, but we'll yes. see what we can get. All right. So, excellent. Nature's closed. Nature's closed. <laughs> Next time on Williams in the Wild. Five thousand bucks. I ain't got the kind of kind of money. <laughs> That's for rich folks who want to hike. <laughs> <laughs> we don't have hiking money. No. No. Not these days. No.